Welcome to the Uncovering Anomalies podcast, everyone. This is episode 45, uh, named to be determined. X is not with us today. He is out uh, sick, I guess we can call it. Um, no, he's got some personal things to take care of. I don't think we were expecting to do one today, but, you know, it's been a while and didn't want to let any of you guys down. Um, thank you for all our listeners, all our supporters out there. I guess we can get right into it. Maybe we should. Uh, maybe maybe we should start out with something funny, or at least I think it's funny. Is uh, now with everything happening in the Middle East, we have Mr. Zelensky. He's not too happy. Uh, attention is not on him anymore. So as you can imagine, the guy is not happy. Let's take a listen to what he's what he's asking the the West and his supporters. You can't give us. Gun, give us some financial support. Okay, okay, please give us a credit, and we will give you back money after the war. You can't. <laughs> That's not a deep fake. Yes, I feel bad for him, but you know, enough is enough. Was it hundreds of billions of dollars? So he's like, if you don't, if you if you don't want to give us financial support, give us credit, give us something, and we'll pay you back. Give us, gun, give us some financial support. Okay, okay, please. Give us a credit, and we will give you back money after the war. Oh, man. I don't know if I believe him. There's no way they can pay back that money ever. Um, I don't know. I don't feel sorry for him. What about you guys? Does anyone feel sorry for him? All that money? He, he apparently skimmed off like 400 million bucks of, his, of that money. You know, he's got mansions in Florida. He's probably got yachts. The guy's got a coke habit, you know, so, no, I don't feel sorry for him. All right, so this came up, too. Unitree must be a Chinese company, but let's watch what they what their new robot called the Unitree B2 uh, can do. It's really impressive, and it's pulling this guy. And for those who are not watching this visually, um, it's, it looks like one of those robot dogs um, from Boston Dynamics. It's got a LiDAR unit on top. And it just walks upstairs. It walks on any surface. And this video shows us off, shows that off. So I'm going to play that quickly. Here's. Precisely. There's a guy that pulls it back. Fine. Doesn't lose any balance. Now, I don't know if this is fast forwarded. It looks like it might be going downstairs easy, easily. The human handler tries to mess it up a bit. Yeah, look at that. Just sturdy. He kicks it. Kicks it. We've seen that before with the Boston Dynamic ones. Pretty impressive. You know, I don't... I do not look forward to having these things just going around the streets. Put out that cigarette. Stop jaywalking. Look at that. Sideways. Backwards. Going up the stairs backwards. Speed up to 21 kilometers per hour. It jumps. Overcoming obstacles. Wow. This is a helpful thing to have around. Construction sites, maybe. Uh, some police forces are using them. This music's too loud. Yes, too loud. Look at that. It just climbs anything. It climbed into the bushes with like a stone structure. Wow. Very impressive. Yeah, you can have this thing like scout out, like be a security, right? Like scout your property. As security, be a good border border patrol, border police. Don't we need those? Have a couple hundred of these. Look at that! How it just goes down. Yeah, some kids can't do that. All right, and we got some weights on it. Sustained walking load: forty kilograms. That's about what twenty pounds, eighteen pounds, something like that. So with those weights, it walked six kilometers, 
seven, eight kilometers. Not bad. Three hours. It jumps. Oh, folks, this is happening way too quick. Look how it lands. So it jumps high and lands flawlessly. Banana peels, of course. Is it going to slip? No. Oh, it catches itself. Man. I guess we get the point, right? Anything else going upstairs? Yeah, see, it's perfect for like construction sites, nuclear power plants, or even like uh, oil rigs out in the ocean, anything like that. Where you have to pay hazard pay. It's basically what it is. Saving them money. Oh, it's going to go sleep or charge. Like Wally. Infrared. Oh, look at that. Tires. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking it's a Chinese company. That's what I'm thinking. All right. So back to the MH370. I don't know if you guys have been watching this separately, but, you know, it's pretty almost conclusive that the MH370 videos that have been leaked are real. I know it's crazy to think about, but once you get past that, you know, what these what the community is doing is trying to prove the physics. So this is Ashton Forbes. He's like the, the go to now, I guess, for the research, you know, although a and he says this to you, uh, too, is that, uh, you know, the community did a lot of this research and investigation. He's just, he pulled it all together into one document. He's the one out there giving all the interviews, and we're very thankful for that. Um, so here, in a tweet or an ex post, uh, here is a condensed version of the Bob uh, Greenier stream where he goes over the science of fractal toroidal movements, but I think it's moments. Let me make sure. Uh, it's track, track the from. Uh, is it moments or move movements? Well, yeah, anyway. Um, oh, yeah, right down here. It's moments, fractal toroidal moments. And we can, I looked up this guy, Bob Greenier. He's got some cool videos. He's a physicist. There's a lot of crazy physics about this stuff. So, of course, it makes sense where someone like him can look at the videos and tell us how it's creating this wormhole or black hole. So let's listen to what he has to say. It's a shortened video of a longer stream. As you pull the mass into the center, the speed of rotation goes up. And when that happens, the bearings on this, they get louder. And Just to remind everyone, he's, he's talking about those orbs circling around MH370, right? Uh, the three of them. And just the formation they're doing, how quickly they're doing it. So he's talking about that and the science behind it. You know, if someone hoaxed this, they would have to know this too. And they have to emit energy at a faster rate via sound and thermal photons. What happens when you've got a spun flywheel and you change its orientation, uh, it forces something to rotate. So the more energy it has and the more you uh, force its rotation, the more the fulcrum there is forced to spin. The requirement to lose energy through uh, sound and light in order to bring the thing to rest. And this one where you force rotation by changing the orientation of the thing that is spinning if we're forcing things that are already got rotation to go into a fixed center we might force it to increase its angular velocity and in doing so uh, it's going to push the thing that's in front of it if it's repelling it away from it and kind of force it into an equilibrium position which would be 180 degrees out of phase which is kind of what you need to produce coherence in electrons as it tilts as well, um, it forces rotation and spin together. So 
One is forcing energy concentration, which will then be radiated as it is here, and one is forcing bin in the other orientation. Yeah, for those who can't see, it's just he has a bunch of balls going into a vortex hole. And then he's going to pause it. Okay. You can imagine that if this one had another one over here, which was mutually repelling it, they would end up on opposite sides when something is coming into a toroidal moment, fractal toroidal moment that has a phase singularity. It can end up cohering electrons first by creating Cooper pairs, 180 degrees out of phase. And because it is this phase singularity, they are forced to the same energy level. And by releasing energy, you are releasing energy from the electron, kinetic energy, whatever kinetic energy it had, is being released as they are coming into phase coherence. And this center point here we are looking at is the center point of a topological monopole. This is the point of phase singularity, where they have to end up at exactly the same energy and they're still forced to orbit and there's more coming in all of the time but they don't go any further so you are able to concentrate energy at the core and this is what is going on in this structure right and i saw he, he gave a great presentation on that um when i was checking this guy out but yeah so Anyway, he shows it right here. That That's how it just disappears. So let's continue listening. And poof. A couple of points about this. There is a formation there, which is exactly what you would probably want to create um, if you wanted to do something with the fractal toroidal moment. And so when the, the punchline came, uh, I was not surprised. <laughs> he was not surprised. The first option, obviously... Is that the oh, and when I looked into these guys, or especially him, or the channel that was covering him, they were talking about uh, there's th this thunderstorm um, generator, you know, which is also a free energy. So these guys have this is the type of physicist these guys are, and that's the type you should have that to think of, to think this way, especially if this video is real and it looks like it is, you know, and this is the type of physics and science uh, these people are using. The plane. Um, is somehow um, made to disappear and um, and that is annihilation. The other one would be that it is put into a wormhole and uh, it reappeared instantaneously at the other end of the wormhole. For me, the thing here is that this has um, provenance uh, without, certainly in my view, the, anyone in the public understanding that this could be possible and the way that it is possible. These structures, I see that the black is mostly... He's basically saying the hoaxer had, had to have known all this, despite all the other stuff, right, that we talked about, that, was, that it was already rendered and finalized four days after the fact, uh, you know, and there's like a list of things behind but there does seem to be a little bit in front we know from extreme interactions that is a video that i presented in azizi a few years ago the vega experiments that the exotic vacuum object has some sort of projected field out in front of it that will cause other exotic, exotic vacuum objects to orbit around them i believe that this is the toroidal moment the beam that goes out far faster in front of it and that, along with the, let's say, the Ukon of Asara, the, this part of the fractal toroidal structure, this, <laughs> this part here, of course this you're changes wearing that. epsilon zero of the physical vacuum. And it has like a beam that comes out in front of it that enables all of the funky magic uh, that these things can do. When these things get close to it, they, they, they don't do anything until they get within the radiating boundary. Uh, and then they orbit around them. And that's true of the toroidal moment that fans out from the, or, or projects out from the front of the, the device. This, this is where the, 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 the Taurus is kind of focusing its 
um, moment to lead to the monopole location, the topological monopole here. This is this a dome that you get. And we showed that our um, observations are more accurate even or very closely match the theoretical modeling of a topological monopole. So here, this is this top. So that the monopole is actually at the base of this bit here, okay? And this is the glowy bit that you see as material is pushed through, but then it, it hits the top of the non-radiating boundary and is fed back into the coherent structure, okay? Here, this is very, very clear. This is, this is almost exactly looking like um, the Alto University peer-reviewed published structure. So the monopole would be at this point. The toroidal moment would be going out this way. And you can see the dark area in front. So it's cohering energy from here. Okay. So this is traveling in this direction. And it's cohering energy from in front of it. Uh, and uh, that comes into what I call the Borg. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes mm. part of the collective. And here is the plume uh, that you get. This is the Uconofasara. Uh, maybe we can get, yeah, so here, there, this is very, very clear, okay? Crazy, crazy, listening to a scientist, look at this thing, which is supposed to be fake, and saying, yep, yeah, uh-huh, this is what it's supposed to look like, yeah, this is what, and he's just saying all these terms, you know, like he, he knows, he's familiar with this. So the monopole's location is here, this is the non-radiating boundary, okay, this is the phase inversion, uh, the dark area above, um, will be where it's cohering energy uh, and you will have the disruption beam coming in uh, to the monopole at the bottom here. To fake this one back in 2014 showed incredible understanding of technology that no one had an understanding outside of the black world, even if there was anyone that had an understanding in the black world. <laughs> <laughs> to fake this one and, and have the thermal imaging uh, correctly representing and the non-radiating boundary and everything uh, is beyond imagining. Yeah, yeah. See, I mean, so much evidence proving that this is these images are not fake. So another update uh, from from Ashen Forbes. He he did a FOIA. He wrote to the government to the Naval Criminal Investigation Service asking about uh, that uh, Lieutenant Lynn, a, a certain Edward C. Lynn, the guy that that the community identified as someone that could have leaked these videos and is now doing time for it. So uh, NCIS FOIA response, Edward C. Lynn case. I have been informed by the Naval Criminal Investigative Service that my FOIA will be withheld in total due to being kept secret in the interest of national defense or foreign policy. Uh, he says, wow, I'm now certain Edward C. Lynn is related to these videos. To Lieutenant Commander Edward C. Lynn, yes. You deserve vindication. It's time to be the hero you were always meant to be. Don't let your sacrifice be in vain. I agree. We all agree. Um, if it really is um, Commander Edward C. Lynn that leaked these videos, he's going to change history. And, you know, disclosure is going to be on our terms and not on their terms. Um, now that we know this technology is out there and it's not NHI who did it. These This is our Navy or military that did this or even contractors same thing you know where they get all that money to um, investigate and all that access to the technology uh, so that's crazy so we'll be watching at the mh370 stuff coming out i mean you know i'm i'm fairly certain these things are real again i'm not completely on the fence like i used to be a lot on and, and on the fence with more, a lot of things but this one is looking so real okay so apparently there uh if you guys remember i don't know a year ago was that a year ago was that this year uh the chinese ufo and all the other uf uh chinese balloon and all the other ufos we shot down so apparently uh a few days before that happened there was there was a ufo mystery over the arctic circle um now the reason why we actually saw the the chinese balloon is because our sensors were was our sensors were watching these UFOs and they they were tuned probably to a frequency or to a range where the Chinese balloons showed up and other ones showed up 
because of this incident. Anyway, let's take a listen to uh, Cool Thart. Near Michigan. And now, a News Nation exclusive. Three sources tell me there was an earlier publicly undisclosed incident over the Arctic Circle on the 1st of February, three days before the Chinese balloon shoot down. These defence and intelligence sources revealing to News Nation eight or nine UAPs were detected over the Arctic Circle and that fighter jets were sent up in what was an unsuccessful attempt to intercept them. Former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defence Christopher Mellon has independently confirmed the same story. Fighter jets were deployed from NORAD to engage with those objects and that they were seen to manoeuvre away, apparently at high speed. Have you heard those allegations? I've heard it now from three different people. Yeah, I've heard the same thing and uh, from an individual who uh, would have plausible reason to, to know. Um, but this really speaks to a much larger issue, which is the lack of information from the Air Force um, about UAP generally. In response to questions from News Nation, <laughs> the Pentagon referred us to NORAD, who deny the allegations that fighter jets were scrambled to intercept UAPs. NORAD does say it had aircraft flying in the area returning to home bases as part of a training operation. News Nation is also being told by sources that the object the US shot down over Alaska on February the 10th was also anomalous. There's been silence for over eight months on these shoot-downs, though in February the White House assured the public it was confident the Alaska object debris would be recovered. It fell not only within our territorial space, but on what we what we uh, believe is is frozen uh, water. So uh, it, it, uh, a recovery effort will be made. Yeah, that's good yeah. news. As an unbiased, although it wasn't made, and they haven't found well, supposedly they haven't found anything. Uh, of course not. You know, it's probably already classified in the black world and gone down that rabbit hole. Um, what's this from the sun, the U.S. sun? Is this a tabloid? Not sure, but it is UFO news. And uh, this lady gives us her bone chilling recording. So, uh, soccer mom sees a 60 foot cube UFO encounter on way to pick up kids from soccer practice. I um, was running errands uh, while the kids were at soccer practice, I was crossing through downtown and waiting on a red light. All of a sudden, everything went dark, like a huge storm cloud rolled in, but then my car started just glowing. She stuck her head out to look up to see what it was, and it was a 60-foot cube shape right over her vehicle. I had never seen anything like it before. It hovered above me, reflecting all sorts of light on my car. I knew in my gut it was a UFO, and I swear to God, I thought I was going to die. That's pretty scary. She thought she was going to die. I mean, yeah, that's pretty hectic. Is that all we have? Uh, travel channel. Is this for a show? It's just like a in the clip. Yeah, it looks like see everyone's just getting on the UFO bandwagon. It's getting a lot of interest. So all the channels, I mean, the government's talking about it a lot. There's a lot of uh, disclosure efforts happening in the government. So, you know, why not? Why not get ready for it? Most people don't believe in this. Um, I mean, a lot do. But, you know, there's at least another 70% of people, a marketplace, I mean, that's going to get interested when this when this stuff is uh, is finally in some way admitted to it, although it has already been. And, man, those MH370 videos, it's just so nuts if we have tech that technology. I mean, the research says it's, we do, but just to see it in action like that is nuts. Um, all right, so this one, are China, Russia ahead of U.S. in UFO retrieval research? That's a great question. A lot of people are worried about that, and, and a lot of people are saying that's why we're having disclosure is because of the way it's set up. It's, 
set up in a way where it's so secretive and even the scientists working on these programs cannot work together so there's no progress so that's why they're thinking of a way to just release this somehow uh because the best way is crowdsourcing you get stuff done in i mean so quickly and people just volunteer their time and so it's a lot cheaper that way but the secret is out that's the problem right and these people can't handle that too dangerous you humans um so yeah what i highlight here so grush's assertion concerning the existence of a terrestrial arms race occurring sub rosa over the past 80 years focused on reverse engineering technologies of unknown origin is fundamentally correct. This is from U.S. Army Colonel Carnell. Also, uh, and we'll watch him too, uh, Representative Eric Burleson stated, quote, it appears somebody has discovered something, some advanced form of propulsion or technology that may actually change all of our lives. So there's that too. We're actually, at, you know, because China and Russia are reverse engineering these things too. Um, and maybe they've, you know, they're not bound by the same laws we have, like with the National Security Act. And, you know, especially a country like China, if they found a propulsion that's going to help them, they're going to say we found it and it's going to catapult them instead of, you know, like the idiots we have running this empire. Um, so, yeah, definitely plausible. Good thing, right? Because get it out to the people, you know, that's it. Enough, enough being stuck in the 50s. <laughs> All right, what do we have here? Ancient aliens, space visitors of the old west. Oh, yeah. Um, so you know, this it's nothing new, right? So e even in the old west, there were encounters um with the UFOs and their occupants. Again, we're not saying they're extraterrestrial, right? Uh this vast continent here we have, North America and the US. Um, just 150, 200 years ago was not mapped. So anyway, so this is a great section of this. I recommend watching the entire episode. But it's Jim Mars, who's not with us anymore, but he talks about the Aurora, Texas case. Let's, let's watch this. He's great. The Aurora Cemetery was founded in 1861, right at the start of the war between states. Texas State Historical Commission has a marker here that states the cemetery is well known because of the legend that a spaceship crashed nearby in 1897 and the pilot killed in the crash was buried here. Fifty years before, the United States Army announced that a flying disc had crashed at Roswell, New Mexico. There was a report of a strange unidentified object that crashed on the property of a local judge. On an April morning in 1897, an airship supposedly ran into a windmill on the property of a gentleman named Judge Proctor. The they ship were even crashing back the then. And was burnt to a crisp, essentially. There was an explosion. In those days, this is before television, before jet aircraft, any big noise got your attention. Plus, the ground shook, so they knew something tremendous had happened. A local reporter arrived on the scene. He reported that there was a large debris field and also that there was the charred remains of what appeared to be, to him, an alien from another planet. The occupant, described as unworldly by witnesses, was given a Christian burial and put in an unmarked grave. But... In 1897, this was six years before the Wright brothers actually made heavier than aircraft work. So uh, this is why I consider the Aurora spaceship crash the smoking gun of the UFO controversy because this occurred six years before there was anything man-made in the air. Witnesses claimed that debris from the crash was recovered by local law enforcement and never seen again. Others claim that Judge Proctor. Crazy that our government's like known about this forever, or at least the people running this country. Wouldn't be wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, this one came in too, and it is a dash cam. Well, not dash cam, a hunting cam. You know the ones they put on 
the trees. I think that might be dash cam too. Um, crazy footage of these lights following this deer. Uh, take a look. There they are. See them? They're like vertical lights. I mean, it could be someone holding it or something. I don't know. But, yeah, super weird. I mean, there are accounts of people, witnesses, uh, witnessing things like this in the woods. You know, even going back to the 70s, I remember. Um, okay, how do we get out of here? Quick, quick. No, nope, I don't want to watch that. So, chilling video, eerie footage captures UFO sighting on Hunter's trail cam. Trail cam, not dash cam. As six vertical lights stalk their target from above. Uh, many believe it could be sightings, UAP. Anyway, we'll link it as usual. So you guys definitely go check it out. Uh, let us know what you think. So this one, Pentagon. We may never figure out the Tic Tac. So this is the Tic Tac video that we all know came out in 2017. Um, they're saying here, uh, Kirkpatrick, since we know he's leaving, he goes, and he admitted that they may not, that they may, may, that they might never get to the bottom of some of the biggest cases, such as the now famous 2004 Tic Tac incident off the coast of Southern California. And he's blaming data as usual. He goes, the way we investigate cases, we really prioritize more of the operational ones from today than we do going backwards in time. And the reason for that is there's no supporting data to actually analyze. Or is it too classified? You know, he won't say that. He won't say that it's been so highly classified would it would never see the light of day. And that's the issue. You know, and what we would say is really no data. What's this? This is from uh, Jets keeping 24-hour alert for saucers. This is a news clipping. From 1952. No data, he tells you, though. Jets keeping 24-hour alert for saucers. Pilots ordered to down objects if they don't land. Washington, July 28th. Uh, the Air Force revealed today that the jet pilots have been placed on a 24-hour nationwide alert against flying saucers with orders to shoot them down if they refuse to land. It was learned that pilots have gone aloft on several occasions in an effort to shoot the mysterious objects to the ground, but never came close enough to use their guns. The Air Force refused to confirm this, but Lieutenant Colonel Monsell Mons, um, Air Force Information Officer, stated that jet pilots are and have been under orders to investigate unidentified objects and to shoot them down if they can't talk them down. Shoot them down. In Air Force parlance, this means that if a, if a flying saucer refuses to obey an order to land, jet pilots are authorized to shoot them to the earth if they can get close enough to do so. Most reporters describe the saucers as traveling at unusually high speeds. 1952. 1952. The Air Force expressed the belief the unidentified flying objects are not a threat to the United States and stated also that they are not a secret U.S. military development. So, you know, yeah, they're not a threat because they don't care about us because they're so highly advanced, way more advanced. You know, we're just a nuisance, if anything. Um, so, yeah, no, no data. So let's go back now. The Defense Department announces Kirkpatrick's uh, departure from Aero. His commitment to transparency with the United States Congress and the American public on UAP leaves a legacy the department will carry forward as Arrow continues its mission. Yes, he's been very transparent. And that's why we've all complained. That's why he's on his way out. And guess where he's going? He's going to uh, Oak Ridge National Labs. Isn't that a nice retirement? Nice and cushy. It's also one of the most active UFO areas in our country <laughs> is it a coincidence he's going there you oak ridge sightings this is from nicap.org this is every single sightings going all the way back to the 19, early 1950s i think the first one is just 1951 50 1950 wait is that the earliest yeah obviously we have nuclear weapons there so that's why there's the interest always 
Uh, Blue Book looked a lot of these things. So it's crazy that he's going there. Lucky guy. That's his reward. Thank you for keeping his secret. Now we're going to send you to a place where all the secrets are. Read up all you want. You know what I mean? You've been read in. Good job, Kirkpatrick. So selfish. At least you get to know, though, right? But we don't. Us plebes. And who it really benefits. And who really paid for it. We don't get to know. But you do. I hope you enjoy your retirement, Kirkpatrick. And I hope your um, <clears throat> replacement will be better. Probably not, though. What do you guys think? Will it be better? So Pentagon UFO boss steps down after explosive admission. That's right. He did admit something before leaving. Let's give him that. What did he admit? We are investigating each and every one of Grush's claims, he said. We're cross-referencing those. There are some bits of information that are turning out to be things and events that really happened. A lot of it is still under review, and we're putting all that together into our historical report. Well, thank you uh, for that statement. But, you know, before, before that, he was always saying we've found no credible evidence. But all of a sudden, he has, and now he's on his way out. Is that how it works? Is it? You know, they put him in there because they know he's going to lie uh, or that he's going to toe the line. And then once he starts changing his mind, they get him the hell out of there. Could be what happened. I mean, uh, J. Allen Hynek, he was involved. He was the f he was the head of Blue Book. And when he left, he started NICAP, which is what Oak Ridge, what we sh saw Oak Ridge showed us. NICAP is them, by the way. That's his organization right here. Dot org. Wait, is it? I'm pretty sure. But. Just don't quote me on it. <clears throat> so anyway, that could be what happens is that when they change their mind, they get kicked out. You know, they, they eventually know humans, good humans, uh, you know, feel bad about lying. So now that we're on that subject of Grush, um, if we all remember when he uh, uh, with the with the congressional hearings, he kept saying, I can I can't tell you here. I can tell you in a skiff, which is a secure uh place to reveal this type of knowledge so what they did was they stripped him of his clearances so he couldn't go into a skiff and tell luna and burchette and all the other representatives what he knows so there's been an effort to bring those back and here's a nice clip of of an amendment that got passed uh to get his uh, clearances back we'll designate the amendment Amendment number 27, printed in Part B of House Report number 118-269, offered by Mr. Burleson of Missouri. Pursuant to House Resolution 847, the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Burleson, and a member opposed, will each control five minutes. Chair now recognizes the gentleman from Missouri. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise in support of this amendment, which would increase slash decrease funding to express that the Office of Personnel Management should renew the security clearance of David Grush. See, Mr. Grush formerly served as the Reconnaissance Office representative to the UAP task force from 2019 to 2021. He recently testified before Congress claiming that partial fragments and even intact vehicles have been found for decades by the federal government, our allies, and defense contractors. According to Mr. Grush, objects and vehicles retrieved are of, quote, exotic origin based on the vehicle's morphologies and material science testing and the possession of unique atomic arrangements and radiological signatures. Mr. Grush also told us that the U.S. is in possession of non-human spacecraft and dead pilots. And finally, Mr. Grush told us that he has spoken with the intelligence officials whom the U.S. military had briefed on, quote, football field-sized aircrafts, that the U.S. government transferred some crashed UAPs to defense contractor, and that the intelligence officials were also briefed on malevolent activity from extraterrestrial beings. Now, of course, all of this is... Ooh, demons. It's very interesting to me and a number of my colleagues on the Oversight Committee. And my first question, when, it, when I had an opportunity for Mr. Grush, was to say that those are pretty incredible claims. I just want to say I get the secrecy, especially against, I mean, for Congress, because Congress is completely infiltrated. I would say the White House is infiltrated. So 
you know, the intelligence community has got to be careful if they want to keep, you know, our security number one. But still, it doesn't mean you keep the entire the entire subject secret. You know, that there really are non-human intelligences, alien, not alien, interdimensional, whatever it is, and craft, even if it's future humans, that shouldn't be kept secret. These type of these that type of knowledge is for the species to know and to contemplate and think about. But I'm from the show me state. You're going to have to show me. And I requested specifics, information, which could not be uh, conveyed in that hearing, not in a secure setting. And unfortunately, he's unable to provide us with any supporting evidence to back up his claims because his security clearance has lapsed. Now, my understanding is that Mr. Grush did go through the proper channels here by turning over classified information to the IC Inspector General. And he ultimately filed a complaint to the IC Inspector General alleging that the information that he presented to the IC has been illegally withheld from Congress. So I'd like to know more about these claims. And so would a number of my colleagues on both sides of the aisles. I now I'm certainly pleased that the Oversight Committee is working hard to bring the relevant Inspector General so we can cut through all of the roadblocks and that have been presented since Mr. Grush stepped forward. But we need to cover all possible angles here. And if we can get Mr. Grush in a skiff with an active security clearance, that would go a long way. This amendment simply expresses the support for the Office of Personnel Management to renew the security clearance of David Grush so that he can show us his work. Now, I'm a freshman member. I've seen a lot of these increasing, decreasing amendments. And, uh, and while on its face, they appear to not do anything, but it's my understanding that that they generally that the agencies generally pay attention to the legislative history and intent, which is why I'm offering this amendment. And I reserve my time. Gentlemen reserves, gentlemen seek time in opposition. Gentlemen does not seek time in opposition. Gentlemen from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield. Gentlemen yields. Questions on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Missouri. I think he got a bunch of yays for that, or is an or is another one. Um. So yeah, good to see that there. I hope he gets his security back, his security clearance, because then he can tell us in a secure setting what he knows. Here's Grush. Um, he this is his uh, ten day trip, or was it like a weekend trip with uh, Jesse McHale's and the guy from Yes? What's this channel called? Oh man, I forgot. I'm sorry, dude. So uh, Yes Now or something. But yeah, he's a great clip of Grush talking about the other whistleblowers that are going to come out, uh, or I have just come out um in the background next is i know there's some intel officers and other people in and out of government that are about to file complaints similar to what i did because they said fuck it you know and then they were on these programs like firsthand dudes you know not people telling me stuff like literally the dudes touching the stuff february of 2024 we should have a presidential panel on UAP disclosure, looking at the crash retrieval issue and everything. And then within 300 days of the enactment of the act, uh, we're going to get some kind of, I think, government statement next year on this topic. The tsunami wave is, is building, and I don't think uh, we're going to totally backpedal anymore. Other than that, it would be totally speculation, but that's at least what's going to come. I think 2024 is going to be, knock on wood, potentially wild in a good way. So, yeah. Do you think this is going to make countries, and especially... February 2024, or at least said 2024, but many people are saying February, so that's only a few months away. It's going to be crazy, 2024. U.S. adversaries work together or kind of yeah. push them apart? I'm hoping it's going to be de-escalatory when it comes to peer competition and like we have bigger things to either look at, worry about, etc. And I don't, I understand it's not going to create some utopian society where nobody's going to care about feudalistic dominance, like, you know, Russia and China, South China Sea, Ukraine, whatever. But I, I hope that it's like a moment of pause where people could be like, okay, we have uh, need to look at our priorities and at least come together um in some sense more than we are now so i think it's a uniting thing versus a dividing thing i hope that's a result of what i did that can't have that <laughs> can't have peace grush what are you talking about dude be good for me because i you know i was in war and i've seen the evils of the world and i rather not you know keep on going humanity's not going down a good path right now no not at all you can see that war is profitable the problem is profit 
if profit is the only thing we care about, and if it's corporations going after this profit, you can't get more cold and more f- farther away from empathy than that. Now, I think everybody can agree it's divergent, both sociologically and then there's these very dangerous uh, hot wars that could lead to like a World War Three type scenario. Yeah, I think there's something so beautiful in like us reassessing our... our- World War Three scenario. Now, this is way before. This interview is way before what's happening. Because you can tell, yeah, exactly. All this secrecy and all this corruption of institutions and this military industrial complex and, and just, yeah... Of course, it's going to create a World War Three scenario. Our entire existence and really figuring out how do we move forward if if reality is even crazier than we, we ever thought. And the only thing we can do is to influence our local environments and just be as good and as kind and as loving as we possibly can. Then that's what's going to you know ripple into this greater reality that we're a part of. Mm-hmm. Right. Change your world. Uh, you, uh, change your immediate world you change the entire world i think so also grush was on uh, who's being interviewed by an italian channel this might not work too well for the audio i'll try my best to read or mute and read what grush is saying um but he gets asked in italian and english but then he answers but then there's a there's a dub in italian i'm gonna try and read it um for our listeners so let's try that Dunque, tu confermi che le stesse affermazioni che, ha eh, che, che hai pubblicamente diffuso sono state fatte in ambienti con classifica di segretezza anche da altri ufficiali militari e di intelligence? Sorry, he, he asks in Italian. You know, in 1971, when I was a lieutenant of the Italian army, serving in an elite NATO unit with atomic miss- missiles in northern Italy, i was asked by two United States Army officers if I was aware that the United States had recovered, crashed UFOs and the bodies of their pilots as well. So, in any case, you can confirm that the same kind of declarations that you publicly provided have been provided in classified environment by other military or intelligence officers all right, so he's basically, he basically asked him if you didn't understand it. He goes that when he was, the person asking when he goes, when he was a missile officer, nuclear missile officer, and that his counterparts in the U.S. came to visit him, and they asked him, did you know that we have a secret crash retrieval program and we and we have bodies, blah, 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 also? So he's asking Grush, he goes, I was told that back then in the 70s. Can you confirm that you saw confirmation of this in a in a classified setting, that this is true? And then Grush answered them, answers them. I'm probably going to read um, the closed caption for our listeners. He goes, yes, these uh, these facts have been confirmed to me by people with direct knowledge who have worked on these programs, uh, that crashes happen and that we have recovered aircraft and biological material or bodies, if you prefer, as I've already reported. Potresti fornirci una stima di quante persone informate e responsabili. So he asks in Italian, but then he's going to switch to English um, after he's done asking in Italian. Can you provide at least an estimate of how many whistleblowers have come forward? Sì, mi sembra che era... All right, so he asks how many whistleblowers are coming. I think he tells him, uh, I think he tells him a dozen is going to come up. What other questions did I want to want you guys to know about i mean most of the things grush talks about in this interview he talks about on the news nation one but there are some unique ones dovrebbero essere circa una dozzina di questi non li conosco yeah so he says a dozen whistleblowers are probably going to come out um ones with direct knowledge of the programs io sono solo quello che si è fatto avanti a nome del gruppo Ma sicuramente una Grush says he's the only one that came forward so far. Uh, but the people have come forward behind closed doors uh, who are not like me, but have worked directly on the programs, which is what we want to see too. We want to see those people come forward. David, dunque tu puoi confermare indirettamente, almeno in parte, quanto il colonnello Philip Corso ha descritto. Oh yeah, this question. So 
he asked about Philip Corso's book, um, The Day After Roswell. Con materiale forniti dai militari. So uh, you can indirectly confirm at least part of what the late Colonel Philip Corso wrote in his uh, The Day After Roswell book concerning the reverse engineering operations being operated by private corporations with materials provided by the, the military. Yes, si, almeno... Uh, al he says, yes, uh, at least on a general level, that's how it is. I can't verify his story, given that he died in 1998, uh, when I was 11 or 12 old uh, years old. But it goes without saying that the U.S. government has spaceships in custody. It distributes pieces of them um, or, or parts to various private industries for the purpose of reverse engineering. So at least on a general level, his story is true. So for those who haven't read that story, uh, get it. Get The Day After Roswell. I mean, it's like an amazing book. Anyway, this is a great interview. I think I'm, I'll, I'll move on. Um, there's another interview with uh, Dr. Stephen Greer, the OG of Disclosure on VLAD TV. He was asked about Bob Lazar. Now I, I have I'm I'm still 50-50 on Bob Lazar. I still am. I just am. You know, I, I I don't completely trust him. I don't completely not believe him. You know, uh let's see what Greer says though. What's the reasoning behind his uh his answer? Well, there's a lot of other ufologists outside of yourself. And one of the more known ones is Bob Lazar. Yeah, now I've met him. Mm -hmm. Very, very interesting figure. Um, he claimed that he was hired in the late 80s to reverse engineer extraterrestrial technology. Uh, he supposedly worked in a secret site called S4, um, you know, which was uh, near Area 51. Uh, he says he's examined alien spacecraft and, and read U.S. government briefing documents that describe alien involvement in human affairs over the past 10,000 years. Now, in general, people have dismissed him. Uh, part of which, you know, he has a bit of a criminal record. Yep. Uh, in 1990, he was involved in a prostitution ring. Yep. In 2006, he was arrested for selling illegal chemicals. Um, journalist Ken Lane states a lot of credible people have looked at Lazar's story and have rashly concluded that he made it up. Uh, yeah, and, so, and, and that's why when we did the Disclosure Project in oh, 2001, and the most recent one, we have not included that testimony because, number one, we need corroboration of it which mm -hmm. we've never been able to get. Uh, now, remember, when I'm this information I'm giving you, it isn't from one source. Often there are a dozen people who have explained the same thing, who aren't knowing each other, aren't in collusion, have been in different commands or different locations. So we try to do that very carefully. So uh, someone like that, I can't say it's true or not true. Uh, there's been no one who has been able to corroborate it. And, uh, but here's something I can corroborate. So just make it clear what he, he's, he knows uh, Lazar and Bazaar. He knows Lazar. He's met Lazar. He's just saying he could not corroborate anything. Like he basically, he's the only one who's saying that stuff. But, you know, obviously we know there's an S4. We know there's Area 51. We know there's reverse engineering programs. Just exactly what he went through and exactly what he did, that has not been corroborated. And that's what he's saying. Let's continue. S4 is real. S2, right. Pahoot Mesa, Groom Lake. We have a current whistleblower who for several years worked in that area and another one who was there around the same time dealing with the ET issue as well as the man-made uh, AT, advanced technology uh, anti-grav craft. Uh, some people call those ARVs, alien reproduction vehicles. Right. And those so is there a, a compound and an underground dumb there deep underground military base there yes uh does it deal with this issue yes now beyond that right right everything else he said we don't know um another cool show that i've found you know if these guys get to see this or to hear this disclosure tonight on youtube i definitely recommend watching uh, his show it's really funny Great information, great guests, great, great uh, callers in too. Um, but Rick Doty, now he's a uh, you know controversial figure. He's lied in the past, and but you know he's a retired Air Force intelligence officer. 
Um, I still like to listen to him, but he's been invited by the DOD, and we can listen to him here and talk about that. He was on the show. I uh, talked about a lot of things, but I wanted to share this one, this clip. Or, or points being in the right direction, but I've never seen anything like that. Uh, so I'll get I'll get off that subject. Uh, I have a number of other subjects, um, and one of the ones I kind of gave a teaser last night behind the scenes after the show was over. Uh, I was invited to Washington, D.C. in November uh, by the D DOD IG. Uh, there's not a date set yet. I was supposed to have a date by Friday. Uh, but anyways, well, there were six of us invited. Uh, three of the people uh, I know, uh, me and three others, uh, we all well worked within uh, U.S. Air Force Intelligence. And then there were two Navy uh, people that were invited. And they're... See, so the Inspector General is inviting these guys. Doty and, the, I mean, guys we know that have been in this world uh, for decades. So they're being invited. I mean, something's really, really seriously is happening. From uh, Office of Naval Intelligence, I don't know who they are. I never heard of their names. Uh, I saw their names, but I tried to do some checks on them. Some of my uh, colleagues within the advanced working groups know these two. two. Uh, one's apparently an admiral uh, who was chief of uh, uh, operations for the uh, Pacific Fleet. And then the now chief of intelligence uh for the pacific fleet and then the other one uh, spent his time at uh shape uh headquarters in europe uh, uh, uh back in the cold war <clears throat> that's all i know about them i don't know what they're going to ask us i know the meeting is going to be at the skip at bowling air force base so i would i would guess that uh it was either going to be entire at air force base. At bowling or, or at skip. the uh u.s intelligence I mean, Air Force Intelligence Office, the Air Force uh, he Intelligence Headquarters is also bowling, and that or it could be there. I don't know. I, I don't know where. And I don't know any questions. I don't know what it's about. I can only surmise that it's probably questions about what we did in the past. And um, but um, uh, when I when I find out when, I'll let you guys know. And uh, hopefully, I can when I come back, I can brief you on what what we we talk. Very cool that he's being invited. and He's going to be asked. So. Another aspect I'd like to bring up is, uh, you know, I've, I've, I speak about this a lot and, you know, there's many reasons why they don't let out this secret, right? And I, you know, a lot of, a lot of it has to do with religion and Doty and other people on this show, uh, the show that we're listening to now, bring it up. And, you know, it's truth. A lot of, a lot of institutions are based on religion and you know judaism and kabbalah and even the mystics the mystic religions right are based on that if you if you take away the divinity of that it, it's really going to mess up a lot of things not people in general but these institutions and these power structures um you know even our astronomy is based on kabbalah they say the big bang theory is kabbalah and you know lots of our sciences also i mean if you you start bringing this stuff in and new science and negate that, you know, the people in power don't want that. These, anyway, that's a different discussion. Uh, but they talk about that here too. Dudes out there in Area 50 want to be it's very accurate. If someone doesn't come to him with very distinct evidence, he can still make that claim. Yeah. Um, but we have to pay attention that it's not necessarily just one thing. It's not just one faction. Hey, one let's hear it. Flaws, meaning that... They're taking the same format they use for declassifying the the Kennedy incident. Uh, but that they're, they're not going to be inclined to make it available to all the rest of us in the world. That they don't really see it as necessary to share with us. Uh, and so that those of us who are in the public who want to have this information to be able to make the most profound decisions that we're ever going to make in our lives as to what the nature of our relationship is going to be with the extraterrestrial civilization for the next 10,000 years is something that all of our people have to be involved in deciding. Uh, and that's why we're putting such pressure on to get this information released to us publicly. Uh, and that's, I just want to make that clear that even the statute that we're talking about here, the UAP Disclosure Act, is called the Controlled Disclosure. Uh, exactly. They don't want to disclose people. They don't because a lot of it has to do with religion.
And they get into this here if no, I find no, it. No, I appreciate Rick's response, which is, I mean, that's an honest response, which is you're going to get what you're going to get and here, 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 uh, everything. Here. And there's probably stuff that that happened. That, you know, what happened. Yeah, uh, without due respect, Patrick, um, there's certain things you, you're speaking from your own personal opinion on a topic that uh, everybody else would like to speak on. There's 8 billion people on planet Earth, and every we go. All, everybody has their own opinion on something. Uh, there's groups of people out, out there that are fanatics, that when they hear something that's against religion, they'll start a war. Mm-hmm. Um, if it doesn't correspond to their beliefs as far as their religious beliefs uh, or practices go, they would start a war. Uh, there's, there's people out there that yeah. uh, are so far... Uh, out of it in reality terms that if 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 we were to say you know we we've captured uh 26 uh different species of extraterrestrials in these spacecrafts that crashed all over the the united states or all over planet earth and what and, and so uh number one they want to know what happened to these things did you treat them that right uh, were you uh, did you illegally detain i mean there's thousands of questions and thousands of things that would be presented to the government that still has nothing to do with like yes we do have we know about non-human intelligences yes some are um, aliens some are demonic some are angelic some are interdimensional what is wrong with that but they won't see because that just muddies the water or makes reality bigger than what it is and no, we just have to focus on a certain type of paradigm. And then that makes people chosen and they can get away with whatever, doing whatever they want, you know, and that's, that's really the issue. You know, the people running this place, we know, you know, anyway. It's that, that uh, opened up their UFO files, especially in the United States and said, here's what we did. I'm going to give you everything that we've done. It would Not cause everything. a nightmare beyond a nightmare, an enigma within. Not everything, Dodie, not everything. Just that we've done it and that these things are real. You know, I mean, leave the philosophy up to people and it's not going to start a war. And, you know, an enigma, a conundrum within a, 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 a conundrum. And it's just not feasible. It's not possible. It's not, uh, uh, it will never happen. So it will never happen. He's saying, and this is someone who's been in this world for decades. You know, it's like it has to come all crumbling down. Is that what he's saying? Before we ever really get real disclosure. There's certain aspects of the UFO program that you're never going to know about. Uh, people <laughs> that were like me, I know a little bit. I don't I don't know everything. Uh-huh. And there's probably stuff that that happened that I don't know about. So so I don't know everything. But there are some things I know that are are so uh, um, so horrible that that, that the What's government's so not going to release that to the public. And that's that's what I was touching base on. As you had said, it- that what it's, it's not, they're not divine. You know the Quran, the the Torah, the, the Jesus. It's not divine. It was, it's it's non human intelligence. It's, it's aliens. It's whatever. So you know maybe it's the process of just making us evolve uh, to civilize us. Perfect. And I didn't want to say it. I kind of I wanted to try to drag it out of you because I I didn't want to say Rick, you've been saying this. It's religion. Yep. It's going to upset religion, mm-hmm. and that's the issue. It, we, it's going to start wars. But we need to face this, though. I mean, who is it for the government to say humanity shouldn't know the truth about themselves because my government will lose power to this new ideology? Right. I think a lot of that is ah. it's, it's a power-hungry thing. And, yeah, there is fear of war. I mean, there are some very extremist people on this planet. I'm not going to deny that for a second. Oh, but I can see that. To, to deny the rest of humanity the opportunity solely on the premise of because we're fearful of uh, a petty war that will be over as soon as the, the under... I guess, you know, we have to be slaves, right, to a certain tribe that's chosen, you know? And if, if not, too bad. Let's see what Sheehan has to say. A, a considerable amount of credibility. And the fact that... The, the various uh, aero, uh, aerospace uh, uh, corporations try to set forth some sort of a long explanation about how they really developed the silicon chip. They really developed the fiber optics. They really developed uh, the other uh, uh, technology that Corso attributes to the Roswell crash. That's exactly what they would do. 
uh, there's not any doubt about it, that they would obfuscate and they would try to construct some sort of an alternative explanation for how they developed themselves this technology. And so I'm just saying that uh, I find the Corso uh, uh, testimony more credible than many people do. Again, going back to Corso, um, you know, just showing how important that book is. So people that haven't read it, definitely go back. Uh, we'll put a link in the show notes too. Uh, don't want to cut this short. You know, it's kind of boring. I thought, I think it's hard to have a back and forth. I don't really, um, yeah. And, you know, I really wish he's here. I wish I, he saw this information. He, he's doing well, though. You know, everyone just sends good vibes and good thoughts to Topher. And, uh, yeah, we'll, um, um, so yeah, so you guys need to, if you need to, um, Please follow us on Twitter at UAP the podcast. Um, we're on YouTube at Uncovering Anomalies podcast. We're on Rumble at UAP podcast. And then all different platforms you can catch us on. So I'll do that there. Again, send, send all your love and, and good vibes to Topher. And uh, hopefully we'll see him next week. Other than that, please follow us. Um, let us know if we're doing well, give us some feedback, anything you want us to cover, let us know, and we'll be sure to respond right back. So again, this has been episode 45. Thanks. And we'll see you all next week.